Jesus, and this is the Soul Moment program here at Church of Uganda Family TV, and you are warmly welcome. This is the Reverend Emmanuel Mwesi. We're coming to you from Kakumba Chapel. We love you very much. There is a puzzle that uh, is common. It comes down from the 9th or 10th century, very long ago, a very interesting puzzle. And the reason I remembered it and I gave it to those who were listening to me, and now it comes to you, is because it has two solutions. However, the common solution is one type, is only type one of the solution. Now, I'm bringing this puzzle so that I can also tell you the type two solution, which is right from the Bible. And that's the scripture we shall be reading shortly. When we are alive to God in Christ Jesus, he even brings what we call ecological justice, peace in the world and all created order. Now, here goes the puzzle. That there was a farmer who was crossing a river, and the farmer had a wolf and a goat 
and potato vines. And the boat that he had to use to cross the river could only carry one item at a time with him as a farmer, plus one item. And unfortunately, whenever he would be with these items, they were all fine. But if he, he would leave them unattended, then the wolf can eat the goat, or the goat can eat the vines. So how does he cross the river? Maybe this should also be a riddle, which if someone can type quickly and send me the, the answer, you can also get a gift. But maybe we don't have enough time for waiting. So let me tell you the answer. So the answer goes like this. That the farmer has to, of course, if he goes with the wolf first, the goat will end up eating the vines. If he goes with the vines first, the wolf will end up eating the goat. So he has to go with the goat first. And when he gets over the other side, comes back, picks the wolf, takes it over there. But he should not leave the goat there. Otherwise, the wolf will eat it. So he has to come back with the goat and then take the vines over. When he leaves the vines, the wolf cannot eat the vines. So he can now come back and pick his goat and take it over. So that is solution type one. Of course, you can also go with the goat, come pick the vines, take them over, come with the goat, take the wolf over, come back, pick the goat and take it over. So that is a physical solution. But now when I read for you the scripture for today, you'll realize that there is another type of solution. And let's head straight to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 11. Isaiah chapter 11. I'll be just picking a few verses. I'll start with verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Let's go to verse number 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Now that is interesting. In other words, the wolf and the goat will end up eating together. They will end up having fellowship. None hostile to the other. What is very interesting is uh, the, the verse that I want to end with, verse number 9. They shall, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. I remember when we read from the book of Hosea some time back, we talked about the knowledge of the Lord. Come, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. And now here we see, for the earth, and when this construct says for, it means because. In other words, they shall not hurt nor destroy on, in all my holy mountain, because the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now, friends, did you know that when the earth is filled and full of the knowledge of the Lord, there is ecological justice and peace. In other words, even the wolf knows it and it will see, oh, the Lord, the Lord's knowledge has filled all of us. It will stop eating animals. It will become a vegetarian. Even the lion will become a vegetarian. Every animal will not be hostile to the other. Human beings will not, hostile to one another, will not be hostile to one another. There will be nothing like destroying one another. Even the cobra, woo, 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 the cobra, that fierce snake, the nursing child will, shall play by the cobra's hole. Mm, don't try it now. We are not yet there where the earth is filled with the knowledge of the Lord. They, we are not yet there. So don't tell a child to go and play near the, the hole of a cobra. 
you will be <laughs> breeding, uh, brooding some unnecessary calamities. But ecological peace and justice is what I see when the earth is filled and full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. When we are talking about being alive to God in Christ Jesus, we are talking about being alive to God, having the knowledge of God. So the other riddle I started with, the riddle of the farmer with the wolf, a goat, and vines, solution type one is there. But solution type two, which is the lasting solution, is for us to embrace this dispensation. When the earth is filled with the knowledge of the Lord, and from verse 1 in Isaiah chapter 11, there is a prophecy which points to Jesus Christ. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. When we talk about the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, then you should remember when Jesus came and said, The Holy Spirit is upon me. The Lord has anointed me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. That is exactly what it says here. The Spirit of the, of the Lord shall rest upon him. In other words, we are talking about the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. When Jesus has begun his reign fully, and the earth is filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, then we shall have ecological justice. Do you enjoy these words of hope? I pray that God will not leave you out. You will not be left out of that dispensation which shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, where you will not run away from a wild animal. You will not run away from a lion or a tiger or a wolf or whatever it is. There will be such peace, such joy. When we are going to the national park to tour, we have to be very careful. We have to go with rangers who know these animals very well and who know how, where to go and where not to go. But in that time, we shall have fellowship. And how people even take flights from abroad to just come and look at our lions, our tree climbing lions in Ishasha. People fly from all over the world to come and look at them. But they have to be careful so they don't bite them. But in this dispensation, we shall enjoy fellowship with one another, with all God's created order. So I pray that you will remain today alive to God in Christ Jesus, dead to sin, so that you will not miss out on that dispensation where we shall enjoy that verbose ecological justice. And I pray that God will keep us all faithful, walking, and following him. We shall not despair today. Our hearts shall be glad because we have a living hope, and we shall end up receiving that inheritance. May God richly bless you and make you a blessing as you are alive in him, alive to his needs, alive to his causes, generously giving and uh, responding to what the Lord calls us to do, serving with joy. May the Lord richly bless you and make you a blessing. Almighty God, all praise and all glory to you. We have a living hope. We have a future. We are filled with so much joy even today. Even when we anticipate and wait for that time, we are filled with so much joy. I pray that your blessing will be upon your children, that they will be strengthened day after day to remain alive in you, never looking back, never regretting what they have decided to do. And for those who have not yet accepted you, Father, I pray that you will captivate them even right now. In case you are there and you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ, to be made alive in God in Jesus Christ, just say these words and say, Lord, I give you my heart. I repent of all my sins. I turn to you, Lord Jesus. You I embrace right now as my Lord and as my Savior. May the Lord bless you and make his face to shine upon you, strengthen you in walking with him, remaining alive in God, in Christ Jesus, day after day, all the days of your lives. 
in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you and have a blessed week.